episode 271, Oliver, James, and the Dragon. It was a rainy evening on the island of Sodor. Edward was telling some of his scary stories, which he usually tells on Halloween, but tonight was a very particular time for scary stories. And so every Halloween, the, the lost engine returns from the scrapyard looking for his lost whistle. Boring. You call that a scary story, Edward? I'll tell you a scary story that is way more horrifying in, than yours. Just then, all the engines heard a whistle, and Oliver pulled up with his brake van Toad. Ah, Oliver, Toad, you're just in time to hear the tale of the Chinese Dragon. Ah, said Percy. James, said Thomas, you know Percy doesn't like your scary stories. Especially since I have to take the mail train at night, darn it. Well, it's not my fault Percy isn't as brave as I am. He needs to grow up for gosh darn sake. What is the Chinese dragon? asked Oliver. Yeah, said Toad. I've never heard of it. You've never heard of the Chinese dragon? Well, said James, you're in for a treat. A spooky treat. Oh, here we go, said Emily. I'll long time ago in china there was a dragon that terrorized villages and always set people on fire burning them to a crisp and legend says that if you ever encounter the chinese dragon your lunch oliver was very frightened and well uh good night everyone i'll see you all tomorrow Percy, are you okay? Uh-oh, I think I'm gonna... Oh, Percy, not again. Sorry. That night, Oliver and Toad found a siding they could sleep at. Arthur was bu busy taking a late-night train to Napford and would not be back till morning. So Oliver and Toad asked Salty and Porter, and they had decided for them to sleep there. But that night, they couldn't sleep. They kept thinking about the Chinese dragon, and they wouldn't stop thinking about it until the stars came out, and they were soon sound asleep. The next morning, Sir Topham Hatt pulled up on board Winston to talk to Oliver. Ah, Oliver, you're in the right place. I need you to take some fish vans from where you are now at Brendam Docks to some of the stations, and then you are to pull the mail train tonight. What about Mr. Percy, sir? asked Toad. Isn't that supposed to be his job? Poor Percy has had a bit of an accident last night. Apparently, James's story about that Chinese dragon went too far, and Percy has gone away for repairs. So Oliver will be doing Percy's job tonight. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Soon enough, Oliver and Toad were coupled to the fish trucks. Oliver was about to depart when James bustled in. I hear you're taking the mail train tonight. So? So, you better watch out for anything scary, like the Chinese dragon. You're still on that again? Wait, I hear something. Could it be? Is it the... <laughs> oh man, you are so easy to get. <laughs> See, that proves it. You are a scaredy engine, Oliver. And James puffed away, still laughing. <laughs> One of these days. Ignore him, Mr. Oliver. We've got a job to do, remember? Oh, yes, you're quite right, Toad. We must stay focused on the job at hand. Soon the guard blew his whistle and Oliver set off.
Later that day, Emily was collecting supplies from McColl's farm when she saw Oliver stopped at a station. What's the matter, Oliver? asked Emily. It's James. He's still going on about that Chinese dragon story again. Yeah, and he won't stop teasing me or Mr. Oliver about it. Don't worry, you two. Whenever I think something scary is real, I th that it isn't real. So the Chinese dragon isn't real. Soon enough, Emily had collected supplies and was on her way again. Don't worry, Mr. Oliver. I'm sure the Chinese dragon isn't going to get us. But Oliver felt dreadfully nervous inside. Later that day, Toad was coupled to the mail train, ready for Oliver to pick him and the mail truck up. Oliver soon coupled up to the mail truck. Oliver blew his whistle and set off to collect, to deliver the mail for Percy. That evening, James was resting at Tidmouth Sheds when Sir Topham Hatt came to see him. James, I need you to collect something from the docks tonight. What is it? asked James. Well, wait and see, said Sir Topham Hatt, and he drove away on Winston. James wondered what his, what the special was. But when James arrived at the docks, he was very surprised to see that his special was the Chinese dragon. It was the same one that Thomas pulled many years ago, the one that he used to play a trick on Percy, and he, that Thomas had delivered three years prior. It was scary, menacing, and horrifying. This gave James a naughty idea. Yes, said James. I'll use this dragon to scare the living daylights out of Oliver. That'll show him that the Chinese dragon is real. Yes, good. No, you won't, James, said Cranky. I am not in the mood for your silly games. This dragon needs to be delivered to the carnival by morning, so you must take extra care. Cranky's right, said Salty. I agree with both Salty and Cranky, said Porter. I know what I'm doing, you three, said James. Right after I scare off. James, wait, you forgot a brake van, said Arthur. But James was too far away to hear. Meanwhile, Oliver was delivering the mail, but he was still thinking about James's story. Is everything all right, Mr. Oliver? asked Toad. I don't know, Toad. Maybe the Chinese dragon isn't real. <laughs> Time for some fun. Then Toad happened to look forward from behind where he was. <laughs> Here I come to eat you. Mr. Oliver, what is it, Toad? It's the Chinese dragon. The Chinese dragon. He'll have us for a meal. Full steam, Mr. Oliver. Let's get out of here. Oliver was so scared, he didn't know that the dragon was actually a paper one, and James was pushing it as if it was moving on its own. That night, all the engines were resting peacefully in the sheds. When... Help! He's after me! <laughs> Was that Oliver and James with a, with a paper Chinese dragon? What is he up to? Get away, get away from me. Not until you're digested in my belly. Oliver raced along the line. Then he saw a bridge. Maybe if I can make it across that bridge, I'll be safe. Oliver raced across the bridge just in time. Then there was trouble. The, the rails were a bit wet, and the dragon was a bit heavy. And without a brake van, James couldn't stop. 
Luckily, James wasn't hurt and his driver and fireman had jumped clear, but both the Chinese dragon and James's tender remained on the rails. Except James, he was off the rails and he couldn't budge. Morning, the following morning, Oliver pulled into Napford at the mail, still frightened after last night's events. I hope we don't run into the Chinese dragon again, Mr. Oliver. Me too, Toad. Just then, Douglas pulled up. What's going on, Douglas? James has had an accident. He was supposed to deliver a very important thing to the carnival, but now he's off the rails at the bridge. The bridge, said Oliver and Toad together. That's where we encountered the dragon last. I can't go, Douglas. The dragon may destroy me, just like in James's story. Oliver, you should know by now you shouldn't listen to James's story. Now you better go or Sir Topham Hat will be cross. Oh, well, what are we waiting for? Let's rescue James. And Oliver set off to the rescue. Oliver puffed towards the bridge with all his courage. There was the dragon, but he was very surprised to see. I don't believe it. The dragon I saw was only a paper one. Hello? Oliver, thank goodness you're here. Please help. James, was it you? Were you the one who scared me and Toad last night? Yes, I mean, no, I mean, all right, fine, it was me. I'm very sorry, please help me. Well, I guess I could. But first, I have to deliver this Chinese dragon to the carnival. The one that you were supposed to deliver. The fireman uncoupled the tender from the dragon, and Oliver set off to the carnival. Later that day, Oliver came back to help James with the breakdown train. Thank you, Oliver, said James. No problem, said Oliver. Soon enough, James was put onto a flatbed and was ready to be taken back to the yard by Oliver. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for them. Toad had told him all about James's prank, and he was not pleased with James. James, you have caused serious confusion and delay. Luckily, the carnival was a great success. For your punishment for scaring Oliver and Toad last night, you will be pulling fish for a whole week. But, sir... I don't like fish. They're so stinky and they make my paintwork smelly. I may like pulling trucks, but I don't like pulling fish. They're smelly. Get used to it. Maybe this will give you some time to think about what you've done. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Then Sir Topham Hat turned to Oliver and Toad. And Oliver and Toad, said Sir Topham Hat. Next time James starts telling a scary story, please ignore it. And the two were very relieved. There you go, me hearty. Fresh fish from the mainland. Ew. Do I have to? Look, I just remembered that I have some coaches to pull, and Henry was supposed to do my job, and, uh... Ha ha ha, nice try, matey. 
but I hope you like the fresh smell of the fish. For the whole m week, that is. Yo ho ho, and a bucket of prong. The tiller spin and the captain yawn. Oh, I hope none of the other engines see me. Just then he heard a whistle. Uh oh. And Percy pulled up after having repairs done. Hey, James, I heard about your accident. Did the dragon scare you? No. No, no, it wasn't. The rails were too slippery because of the rain. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I've got some fish to deliver. Don't let the dragon scare you, said Percy. I hope this will teach James a lesson for playing a spooky trick on Oliver. Don't you?